And so obviously sort of welcome, this, this is about sort of the VA architecture program that we're talking about right now. And as Jim was saying, we have over 50 years of history and in terms of ranking, we are in the top three for research and architecture, <clears throat> the top five for architecture and the top 10 for arts, design and architecture. And as we said, in the first class category for sustainable universities. <clears throat> we are talking in effect at the moment about sort of the uh, part one, which is a three year full time study program um, here at the University of, of Plymouth. And obviously it is otherwise known as the RIBA part one program. From that program, people would either move down onto the part two program, the masters or onto any one of the MAs, which have been discussed and presented <clears throat> in the earlier presentation. The reason I mentioned is there's something about the undergraduate program in architecture that is very, very broad and is discursive to allow you to engage with a whole series of issues that also, should we say, then become more specialised in the multiple options of masters that can be available to you after completing your degree. The program is uh, fully uh, a, a sort of a, a, it's fully recognised by professional bodies, both the RIBA, Royal Institute of British Architects, and the Architects Registration Board. And we are commended on our civic responsibilities. And we also have recognition with um, professional bodies ac across the world. So, um, our vision of values most definitely are about, as we're saying in the film, a studio culture. And it's very much so about, in a sense, you entering into a dialogue and having that engagement in an environment that allows you to sort of be in, a, in an active and engaged and relevant place so that you become critical players as you move forwards um, post your degree education. And here, perhaps I can ask either Nicholas or uh, Faz just to begin to explain maybe something about the, uh, the studio culture. Yeah, I'll, I'll go on. Um, so basically we work in like groups um, in studios, usually groups of six and there's quite a lot of us in the studio and when working together it's actually nice to kind of talk to other groups and kind of collaborate even though like your ideas are different you can kind of dialogue with other groups and kind of learn how to progress forward. Yeah. And obviously, Nicholas, you're not with us in studio at the moment, but um, you're, you know, can you just talk about how you're engaging sort of remotely at the moment? Um, it's, it's kind of a big challenge because of the eight hours time difference. Mm -hmm. But it's still, it's still good for me because like, um, you have to uh, fully engage with uh, everyone, mm -hmm. uh, be it... Uh, the collaborative work or individual work yeah yeah and so I think what is actually being said here is this thing about actually student to student peer-to-peer -peer learning and creating that community and that culture is something which is absolutely of value in the way that we sort of teach within our program to allow you to progress to get to fulfill your potential and in a sense there, therefore open up a dialogue of trust to push you to sort of go beyond your limits. Of course, within this, within sort of what is now a kind of global teaching, uh, we've engaged with ways to allow you to sort of become much more agile, but also we're doing things which allow you to sort of become part of something where we're doing a whole series of sessions which may be pre-recorded, giving you access to industry standard software, wherever you might be. And so alongside working a community of experts in their fields, you are working alongside practitioners on a weekly basis to ensure that sort of everything that's happening within sort of all modules is relevant to, should we say, academic thinking, but also relevant to things which are happening in industry right now. And so alongside that space of studio, there are obviously the facilities that were discussed to enable you to sort of fulfill the potential of the program that we are working with, with you right now at the University of Plymouth. And for those who can't be with us directly on campus, as said earlier, you have uh, access uh, home licenses to a full plethora of industry standard software so that we can still engage and participate together uh, in what is a whole community, although at times it may be slightly more, so should we say, 
uh, differentiated. The great thing about the program is that the modules are all interrelated. And so within the modules in semester one, which is doing with communications, design and history and theory, they will also sort of follow through in, in third year in semester one. They integrate into each other to begin to then inform what is happening in the main thesis project in semester two in studio, where second and third year students also work together in a vertical collaborative learning environment. And so that agency of peer-to-peer -peer learning becomes, should we say, full for its potential as we migrate into semester two. Semester one being a space where the year groups can actually sort of uh, undertake a series of skills to enable them to engage within what is happening within the semester two environment. And I'm now actually just going to show you a sample of work that's also it, that has happened in the recent past. A lot of it actually since we've been in challenging times to be able to explain and show you, and demonstrate to you that actually sort of the quality of thinking, the desire, the ambition, the resolution, the relevance actually hasn't changed as we've moved into, in a sense, a different learning environment. And we've actually also changed our ways of actually teaching and delivering to enable students to fulfill this potential. And so this is actually sort of first year work from um, last year. And students are now actually doing work with the clients on this project uh, to enable the, the clients to, in a sense, be able to sort of put projects together that can potentially get funding, which would then enable things such as this as a vista space to be able to be built. And therefore, within your first year here at the university, you may well be working on live projects, which actually will be sort of coming into sort of execution and being developed whilst you are still a student with us at this university. And I think that's an amazing place to be to suggest that that is happening by the end of the time you complete your first year studies with us. And colleagues with us now will probably effectively remember something about this project because some of them were working on this also last year. Work that's happening directly in first year studio at the moment is obviously around sort of understanding a, a, a series of sort of, should we say, observations, translating, skilling, begin, beginning to kind of hone in those tools of representation, but also those tools of inhabitation, and shall we say, the way we choreograph and begin to use space, but also then through kind of experimentation through model and sort of physical manipulation of things. So we're working through drawings, we're working through understanding of, shall we say, translating them into sort of an architectural language of plan and section, et cetera, but then also playing around physically with models and studios and then allowing work to be celebrated in a virtual environment in the top image as, as it would be laid out in studio should one be actually exhibiting or displaying their work with us right now. Students in first year are also working with master's students in setting up a live project uh, around the notion of parts. And in a sense, in understanding parts, making stories, in collecting their data from those things to be, able, be, to be able to set up a series of, should we say, issues to which they can respond. Also within this image here, you can start to see the way in which we as a teaching team are being able to engage with students, both kind of in studio, but also remotely to in a sense show, tell, display, understand how you might actually begin to kind of work within um, sort of be, um, you know, engaging with these skill sets. Um, and that is something which has happened obviously sort of you know, throughout first year and as we go forwards. And again, I think sort of you know, um, our two student colleagues could actually just begin to talk about sort of how first you began to equip you in coming into the architectural environment. So I don't know if you would like to sort of discuss something about your first year experience, guys. Uh, would you like me to start? Yes, if that's okay. Right, um, so basically in the first year, we kind of worked closely with um, with um, the zoo. So we got to build, we were asked to propose like um, an enclosure for the leopards, if I'm not mistaken. And okay. and also like, a, like a, a pathway around the zoo. So it's kind of kind of interesting because uh, they give it they gave us quite a lot of freedom to kind of choose where to design on site and yeah m most of us actually took advantage of that freedom kind of do I would say kind of crazy things but it was actually really fun yeah overall and we and I think before that we got to build um, an outdoor campfire space for a for a school as well and we actually got to build it hands on so it was really fun. 
getting wet and all. And that, and I think that was an image I showed earlier. The, the, I think the interesting thing about this to, to all of you is that project was actually made from all reclaimed materials. Um, and the studio space became a massive workshop of sort of making old kind of broken pallets usable again, etc., etc. And that project has actually been shortlisted for uh, an International Sust Sustainability Award. And interestingly, out of the 11 shortlisted projects, it is the only student project in that final shortlist. And students built that by the time they had finished their first semester. So they're building a kind of live outdoor classroom, which has also been submitted and shortlisted for an international award right now, which is absolutely fantastic from that point of view. So there's something about the kind of the agency of first year, which then allows you to actually begin to kind of progress going forwards into second year and in, then into third year. And again, what is actually- Andy, could I just interrupt for a second? She goes in the room and I wondered as, uh, you know, leading the first year, if she'd just like to talk a little bit. Oh yes, certainly, sorry. Yeah. No, no, that's just, okay, no, I, I just thought she joined. So I just I wanted to invite her. That's okay, yeah. before you go on to the second year. Uh, please. Hello, Toshiko. Oh, I, I, I was just shadowing, so <laughs> I it would be great to encourage you not to be visible. Hello, guys. How are you Hi, doing? Lovely. And it would be great just to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about what you do, um, just if you don't mind, just for a few minutes. That's fine. Hi, my name is Toshiko Terazono. Um, I look after the first year students as they arrive in Primus University. Um, uh, as the, yeah, um, Hamad said that we like having fun, so that's the kind of the driving tool to how we can learn architecture to have a fun, but also to understand the world through the different um, skills, different tools that we introduce, making, drawings, and um, being thrown in out in the world to experience the different type of climatic conditions and stuff like that. So. Um, Yes, I think the in terms of insight, the both Nicholas and Muhammad can share a uh, much closer level from their point of view. But um, if you have any questions, and I'm happy to um, answer for anything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua, and, and welcome um, in, in, in joining us this morning. <laughs> Thank um, you. And so, and as actually as Shiko has, has been saying, first year is about fun, but in a sense, it's about fun, but also acquiring a huge skill set as you progress through the semesters. And so, you know, um, if you're concerned that you may not necessarily have architectural or sort of design skills in coming into first year, don't worry. Those things are introduced to you as you progress through the year, uh, through kind of a series of charrettes and workshops, through show and tell, so that you build up the skill sets. Um, and it will really surprise you by Christmas, just when you when you kind of go back for the in, in a sense when, in the holiday period, how much you have acquired in those first twelve weeks. You will be astonished by that progress. And so I think that is really really important to then lead into second year, because in second year we do uh, we work again on life projects, and here we're working with sort of a a, a specialist group uh, in the. Uh, at the, you know, the National Park of Dartmoor, which is very, very near to the university. It was an open competition for students to do in groups and the uh, Fingal Woods, who are the organisers of the area, actually chose the winners and students up until recently, when we're in a safe working environment, uh, were able to then go to an amazing site and actually start to build what are the winning schemes. The winning schemes are for the community and they're for people to understand and enjoy what is actually sort of, you know, a natural woodland area, which is being actually nurtured back into woodland from being a plantation. So a huge ongoing project, which is embracing everything about kind of sustainability and the relationship between say building and nature simultaneously. Third year students last year worked with a live project called Future Parks Accelerator, which is about valuing open spaces in cities, of which Plymouth was one of only 11 cities in the UK to actually sort of win sort of national recognition for participating in this project, which was driven by the National Trust. The, the semester one project was then in a sense kind of um, broken down into sort of the key headlines of what the project was about. And one of our students within a month or so of graduating 
um, which is this scheme here, which is this poster, and they all through a poster campaign, describes something about parks as, what's that worth to you? And there is a series of posters that are rolled out from that. The National Trust was so impressed by that, it was rolled out across the country, and the student that did this has been actually in consultation and been commissioned by not only the city of Plymouth, but with Birmingham, Edinburgh, Bournemouth, Islington and Cambridge, Cambridge, Camden, Cambridge and Nottingham to set up, in a sense, a campaign about the value of these spaces we, as we've been coming out of lockdown across the country. So from, in a sense, the sort of northeast in Edinburgh down to the southwest in Plymouth, this campaign has been visible throughout the months of August, September and October. And just imagine... If you come to study at the University of Plymouth, you could be in a position where you are having your work commissioned within something like a month to six weeks after you have graduated. It's an amazing space to be, an amazing place to be, because we're working on live projects. We're doing things which are relevant, which are meaningful, which are actually dealing with things which kind of we need to engage with right now. Second and third year students last year in semester two, working sort of collaboratively across both years. We're working alongside Plymouth City Council with the Plymouth Sound National Marine Park, which is, in a sense, Plymouth is the first city to not only just have a national park, but to have a national marine park. So there's a protected sort of waterland to the coastal edge of this amazing city that you might want to come to study in. And this is about now just sharing the work, which is, you know, in a sense, this is second year work at the end of in a sense, semester two of their second year. Again, working alongside third years, there's not just about the sense of kind of, should we say, an articulation of the way in which work is completed and represented in some ways, but a real relevance in how programmes are being situated and set up. And again, sort of second year work here, which is, again, showing just a different set of skills and a different means of representation to begin to kind of show work. Students work in groups that are a neighborhood or master plan of which then each project sort of hangs off of that master plan. So they are working in an environment which is both collaborative, uh, collective, but also sort of individual simultaneously, which allows them to understand skill sets about delegating, about consultation, about taking responsibility, about working together, about reaching out to a wider audience, audiences, etc., etc., to allow a body of work which actually sort of, as I say, is responding to needs which are kind of current within the city that we kind of live in right now, but also engaging to things which also are relevant to kind of, should we say, issues around climate emergency, ecology, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera as we begin to go forwards you know so different projects one the last one which is actually sort of in a sense very much so about kind of taking its key from place uh this project here actually being uh, generated from a series of sort of codes which were put together in a sense working with parametrics to come to and then using sort of a a kind of filter called Dynamo, which actually started to, should we say, set out and distribute the way in which the project was being kind of set up and elevational studies emerged from Camille. Here is just a series of images which are beginning to show final year work from last year as part of our digital graduate platform, which is called the At Night Festival. And as you can see from these images scrolling across, we don't necessarily have a particular style or kind of way in which we want to work. We in invite students to bring their work together from their own preoccupations, from their own research, to allow that to actually sort of come forward to an architectural proposition. And so they're building a body of work within a portfolio at the end, which genuinely belongs to them as individuals and therefore has real agency as they go forwards into the world outside. And here we're just now looking at sort of second year work currently, um, and this is from sort of a couple of weeks ago, where they're working in a, an area which is kind of up for regeneration to the, uh, to the east of Plymouth and working on something which is critical to all of us right now. Notions of what resilient housing or housing in the future is going to be as we begin to sort of uh, progress forwards into obviously sort of areas where there's greater levels of population increase happening and probably less space to live within. And so I'm really confronting those issues head on. And I know Nicholas, you've been working on this project recently. So do you want to say a few words about how this project has actually been sort of kind of, yeah, how you've been responding to it in some way? Yeah. Um... I've learned a lot from this project, especially working collaboratively with uh, team members. And 
Yeah, um, I've also learned a lot about uh, city planning, master planning, um, knowing the connections between buildings and also um, the relationship between buildings and the people. Wonderful, and I think this is the key thing. So as you progress through the years, different sets of skills, different sets of information are introduced to you. So first year is about playing, experimenting, and I don't mean playing in that sense, but sort of really understanding and building up a series of skill sets to lead to a project which is kind of, you know, kind of allowing you to get to de dealing with something such as, say, the Dartmoor Zoo project uh, towards the end of um, your, your sort of first year. Second year starts to introduce a larger scale within, say, a neighbourhood of understanding something about urbanism and urban planning, and then to sort of build in groups to build responses with them with individual housing as we go forward. So you begin to sort of, should we say, in a, you know, begin to kind of understand the condition of architecture from a slightly different lens to also just build up your skill set and your knowledge set as you go forwards. And then obviously, so this is actually things about what we've been doing with resilient housing. And then in third year, which uh, with, with, where uh, Plaza is working with us at the moment, uh, we have been working on a series of parks. So much larger spaces, but actually understanding sort of the relationship between these things as we did last year and their benefit to society, communities, and the city as a whole. And Faz, do you want to talk a bit about how sort of third year has been in, in your sort of way going forward so far uh, this semester? Yeah, um, so basically from like second year to third year, it's quite a huge gap, but it's quite bearable, I would say. Um, so basically, I, I'm working on a park, uh, it's called Todd Hill Park, and you know, we get to address uh, a few a few issues, and we found the most like important issue to kind of address was the fragmentation on the site. So the community on site, on the park, didn't get uh, much feedback from, from the... Um, from the body that takes care of the park so um yeah and while on site you know i actually i only visited site once since i came back and it was quite interesting that as you carry a camera around trying to take like site photos mm -hmm. the people on in on the park would actually ask what what we're doing and it's really ex uh it's actually fun because you know they will get to engage with us and we can kind of get more insight on the issues that's actually happening instead of just trying to analyze it from our eyes, we get to see it from their eyes as well. Yeah. yeah, and this is the key thing, you're working actually in third year in a sense in an environment of public consultation. Even within sort of, should we say, kind of social distancing measures, students have found really innovative ways to reach out to communities uh, to, begun, to begin to sort of understand the things that they begin to value, the things that sort of are meaningful to them as we go forwards and they start to sort of respond to a project which has taken on board some of those issues simultaneously. And so you're working in an environment where arguably you are responding to a brief as a framework but being encouraged to engage with communities and should we say kind of consultants from the city council to come to responses which are relevant obviously as we begin to go forwards and therefore obviously have a legacy of going forwards within semester two simultaneously. And so I think these are really key things in going forwards as what is part of our learning environment. Our visions and values very much are about an environmental agenda going forwards because we are actually working along alongside the Plymouth 2030 uh, Emergency Challenge and there's been a series of webinars which have been available to students since the beginning of this academic year and we're also in semester two going to be working alongside colleagues in the Sustainable Earth Institute, experts in the fields of things to do with environmental issues, carbon ca ca capture, carbon content and obviously sort of sustainability but alongside that as, as Faz has been saying, actually working with communities to understand that there is also social sustainability as well, which is, allows all of these things to come together as a holistic whole as we go forwards. As I said earlier, first years I have one, did a project fully of recycled materials, and these guys are third years now, and that has actually been shortlisted <coughs> for an award going forward, the only student project going forward. So second years have been dealing with sort of small scale urban planning, leading to individual project responses around the issues 
related to sort of resilient housing as we go forwards. And third years are working on a series of issues related to how, in a sense, green spaces, parks actually become integrated and are as important as any other infrastructure element within our cityscapes to allow them to be understood as something as of value as that may be of a town square within the urban condition as we go forwards. Arguably, all of these things are threading through from the idea of we're dealing in, in ups, and upscaling and upscaling through notions of architectural ecologies to allow us to really engage with the critical agendas which are confronting us right now. For the portfolios, we're looking for something which is creative and is explaining and actually sort of celebrating you. It should be a maximum of uh, 12 to 10, 20 pages, and it could be about anything you want. And it's actually something about your showcasing how you can problem solve how you kind of can, in a sense, set up a narrative to explain a body of work. If you would like more information on that, you will find it on our website and you can also contact our admissions tutor, Nicolina, whose email is on this slide now. And if, again, if you've enjoyed this presentation, we're going to questions, please follow us on um, social media right now. And so I'm going to stop share and just ask, are there any questions from anybody uh, following on from the presentation that we've just given? If there aren't right now, can I ask Faz, you're, uh, you're in Plymouth, uh, what's it like as an international student to be living in this city? I would say it's actually really fun because uh, like I come from like an island and it's basically the same thing as a coastal town but it actually feels really different because uh, where I live everything's not really a walking distance away and here I live relatively close to the city centre so um, just going down to the hole is about a 20 minute walk and if I feel stressed out I can just walk there um, you know just have a drink there or something there's lots of fun things to do you know yeah, uh, yeah. and how close is the sort of the the, the campus to the city centre um, where I'm staying currently it's uh, it's about uh, Okay, when I first came here, it was about a 15 minute walk. One no, the five, great, uh, sorry, no, the School of Architecture. How close yeah. is the School of Architecture to the city centre? Yeah, it's a 15 minute walk, but after okay. coming here a while, I got used to it and it became a seven minute walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's really close actually. Yeah. Yeah. You literally just have to cross the road and walk a block and you're in the city centre. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, I don't know if colleagues would like to add anything, and are there any questions? I'd like to add if, just something until there is a question, uh, so, but feel free to, to yell out anybody who does. Um, accommodation and the cost of living is actually very, very reasonable. So I don't know if you um, have looked into that, but it's an important consideration, I think, when coming to the UK, because the fees for courses can be very, um, well, they, they can vary actually. Some of them can be almost three times as much as what we charge. Um, but in terms of living costs, to live in such a lovely area that both has a real rural beauty. My husband was born in, in Plymouth. So, you know, the seaside, there are many, many beautiful things about it. But also it's not expensive to live there just as an everyday cost. Um, and I think that's quite an important thing to think about as well, if you're considering it. There's a question. Okay, yes. Thank you for the question. Yeah. Shall okay, I, so, uh, yeah, you start, yes, Andy, yeah. I'll, I'll add on. And if Toshiko wants to in between, yep, go. Well, if we start, in a sense, what is this sort of, should we say, the, the daily timetable? going forward in starting architecture. If we start with first year, and I hand over to Toshiko, um, if you could you explain sort of something about sort of the contact time in first year, please. The contact time is we have three full day uh, <coughs> of five to six hours of um, different subject module being spread around. Um, and then outside of it, um, students tend to, we in a normal, situations they tend to actually um, gradually migrate into the studio then especially during the kind of intense work towards the deadline they'll stay in the studio keep making stuff so <laughs> it's the it's a barriers but the actual classes are that six uh three days whole days from 10 to 5. 
And then as you progress into second and third year, the contact time teaching is sort of between sort of two and a half to three days, leaving you time for what we call self-directed study, where you can get together in groups to sort of undertake work and sort of have time to do things to then sort of meet up with um, sort of your, the teaching team to progress projects forward. And so, and that self-directed time is really valuable for you guys to, um, in a sense, have the space to kind of consider what it is you're up to and to be able to obviously sort of do things. Even though we are in sort of limited access at the moment, we still have, in a sense, an amazing amount of floor space and students can go in on the self-directed sessions to book tables to work out, which are obviously all set out in a completely COVID safe environment. I don't know if you want to like, would like to add anything further, Ajia. Um, well, we've got 1500 students in the entire art, design and architecture. So in that sense, and we have great studio spaces, they're large. We've been very lucky in that the facilities that we have um, are, are so good in that we have been able to offer students this very valuable sort of face-to-face -face working space. It's not that all of our staff have been in there or nor that all of the students have, but it's an option for people if they want to come into campus. And along with that, the library has been open. You know, we've kept the campus running and it is because of this lower number of students than we have in comparison to say the other larger schools in London or further up north. Uh, we're in a slightly different situation in that regard. Um, yeah. yeah, I think the other thing really is we focus on well-being. So while we always talk about work and architecture and we also understand that it's important for people to do other things when they just need to have downtime, just to refresh. Um, there's a student hub which has a whole range of different things, clubs you can join. We have parks that Lucas, who is in this break room, he's part of the group that lead parks. And so there are various events that they organize, um, some academic, some not. But we also have lots of other things that you can join on campus. Um, I was looking at it last week, actually, uh, rugby, whatever. You, if you want to get into a club, there's a long, long list of things there that you could join in to. And some of them are just groups to get to meet people to understand different things about the UK as well. Um, but there's, there's, there's that understanding, um, I think, of, you know, trying to kind of get you connected to other people as well, socially, inside your program as well as outside. And the other thing is we provide a lot of support for students, just particularly now when students can be suffering from isolation of not always being able to come into the studio. Um, we try to do as much as possible to stay connected with people. And uh, it's a really big priority for us is for students to reach out to either people in other years, to staff, there's, there's a whole gamut of people that you can reach out to. But yeah, as we said from the outset, it's about community. community. So, uh, and for me, I don't like to have any student feel outside of the group so yeah it's a big priority for us and i think that actually is something which we really do value from the day that you arrive here is this notion of community as in the film that we showed sort of when Tadi was talking about arriving sort of you know after a 14-hour flight and being absolutely welcomed by the first year sort of team of tutors and so it is very 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 uh, important to us that you are you, 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 you are you're coming from sort of you know, potentially sort of you know, the other side of the world. Things are going to be very, very different, but you kind of are part of somewhere where you feel safe, you feel welcome. So you can then actually sort of concentrate on your studies simultaneously. And, you know, um, our external examiner said to us this last June that you know, the fact that it's amazing that the community that we really value is still together. We, we've worked at, you know, uh, tirelessly, I think we are all colleagues, to enable everyone to feel that they are, are still very much so part of what we are doing. And that is something that we really do genuinely value right now. I notice we've got, I think, about four or five minutes left of this breakout space. So does anybody have any questions that they would like to ask? <laughs> 
Thank you, Justin. Yes, thank you. Um, any other questions at all? Any tips for the quiz? <laughs> <laughs> He just has all the questions. If you ask him now, you can get all the answers and win the prize. <laughs> um, hello, Nicolina. So, are there, are there any other questions at all? If you if you do have questions, please um, do contact um, Nicolina, who is our admissions tutor, who can give you give you guidance on sort of the on portfolios. And we're happy to, if you want to, we're we're operating a series of sort of portfolio surgeries and you can come along and we can give you advice on your portfolios and so we're part of your journey from the moment that you're thinking about in a sense putting something together to apply to university we're more than happy to engage with you and then and Nicola will be, be able to provide some dates of when we can do those things if you would like to sort of have advice sessions on that we're more than happy to have those discussions with you and they will also be with students and so you're also talking to students who have or yeah, undertaken that process simultaneously. Thank you, Ai Chen, for joining in. Um, I was going to say, keep an eye on our website as well. We're developing it to put in much more content. Um, so you'll be able to see, I mean, obviously by following us on Instagram or on any platform that you, you know, use, um, but also more information about what we're doing. It's going to be up there progressively. Um, but do keep in touch. I think that's really important. If there's any way we can help, just reach out um, because, yeah, we're very keen to, to connect and to support in any way we can. <laughs>